How do we get around the lobbyists and what they do and how they how they represent special interests? Janet, the, the simple way is to pass the fair tax. And I know that may sound like a disconnect, but it's not. Here's why. There are 35,000 registered lobbyists in Washington. Now, those are the registered lobbyists. It does not include the people that are just considered consultants. That represents 70 lobbyists for every one of the members of Congress, 70 per each member. Now, why do those people lobby? I'll tell you. They lobby to get tax breaks for the companies and clients they represent. Most all legislation in Washington, virtually 80% of it, is the manipulation of the tax code so that companies who pay lobbyists are able to get benefits. And frankly, you know, I don't blame them. They're trying to save their companies. But that's what it's about. Well, if you had the fair tax, which eliminates the tax code, all 67,000 pages of it, and you have a simple uh, tax on consumption paid at the point of retail sales, you eliminate the IRS, you eliminate the complexity, you eliminate the half a billion dollars, uh, excuse me, half a trillion dollars that we spend in this country on accounting fees, and then you have a system that, frankly, doesn't need lobbyists because Congress can't manipulate the tax code. Uh, the Erskine Bowles Allen Simpson Commission came out with ideas that were equally hated by both sides, which ma made me think it must be a pretty good <laughs> idea. Right, right. And, and I really believe that what we should have done is, is to recognize that because it makes no one completely happy, it's the best we're going to get and, and go with it. Government is like marriage. You don't get everything you want. But we've got people now on both the Republican and Democratic side whose attitude is all or nothing, now or never. And when you approach governing that way, you get nothing and you get it forever. Uh, you can campaign with this sense of uh, absolute my way. That, that's campaigning. Governing is recognizing you don't have all the working parts and you have to find ways to negotiate, navigate, and compromise not your core values and principles, but compromise the timetable and the particulars of what you want in order to bring uh, the better good of the society forward and, and, and actually govern. And that's what we're missing today. I came to Branson four years ago uh, for that fundraiser. Uh, I mean, every week we were, it was kind of like if we had enough money, we kept going. And if we didn't, we quit. And I had made a deal with uh, the Lord and my wife, uh, not necessarily in that order, <laughs> <laughs> but I had made a deal that you know, when we ran out of money, it was over. Yeah. I was not going to borrow money, because I think that's the dumbest thing people do, is to borrow money for a campaign. Because if you lose, you're stuck with that debt forever. Right. And uh, so we, we said, we will do what we wish the government would do. We will only go as far as our money will take us. We will spend what we have, and we will borrow nothing that mm -hmm. cannot be paid back. And so when we came to Branson at that particular time, it was already tough getting money, and we, we were able to, uh, to raise money here that kept us going for yet another week, and then that kept us going. And, and so it really was a, a very critical point and an important juncture in the campaign. So uh, for all those people who wished I'd quit earlier, it's <laughs> Branson's fault that I stayed in the race so thank long. So great to be with you, Steve. Janet, thank you. Thank you, thank you so very much. Usually it's by phone, so it's great to get to pop in the station and uh, you come in anytime you having fun on TV but TV's yeah. not radio is it? no it's not radio look I, I love radio radio gave me an education right. that was my first job and it paid my way through school through high school and college and grad school and going back into radio has been the biggest thrill of my life and when people ask me well what do you really love and I said you know I, I love getting to do the radio commentaries every day it is it is not only First of all, radio requires a, more creativity. Right. Believe it or not, right. to people who don't know, it does. Um, and it's also, it's the everywhere, anytime, all the time medium. I grew up with a station manager in Hope, Arkansas, same one that Paul Coates worked under, who used to say, uh, read it in the paper tomorrow, watch it on TV tonight, or hear it on radio right now. Exactly. Exactly. We appreciate it very much. Thank and you, Mike Huckabee. Great to be with you.